Hi, this is Federico, and in this video, I want to answer a question that was submitted about how to make tessellations using Cuddle, tessellations like repeat patterns. Um, so big disclaimer here is that this is a big subject, and what I'm going to do here is just give you a quick primer and maybe just a starting point so you can start experimenting and playing with it, because, you know, playing with this is really entertaining, and it's particularly fun to do it in Cuddle. So, um, yeah, so let's get started. The idea of tessellations is that a tessellation is when you have a shape that when repeated, it covers the plane entirely without overlapping with itself or without leaving any gaps. And I think they're most famous. You might have seen, might have seen the drawings of MC Escher, who was a Dutch artist, who was basically a genius creating these uh, beautiful repeating patterns. So what we're going to do here is not something as sophisticated as this example I have on the screen where he made a lizard that has, you know, some rotations and, and translations and it, it covers the plane in this very beautiful fashion. But we're going to do a little simpler one that, um, that's still very satisfying. So let's try and do that. So the basic idea here is that we're going to do something uh, where we create a tile that covers the plane. And the simplest tile to understand is probably a rectangle. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to drag a rectangle that is uh, one inch by one inch, and I'm going to try and cover the plane with it. And the easiest way to do that is to select it and go to modify and apply the tile repeat modifier. So this, as the name implies, uh, creates a repetition as if each piece was a tile. And so this one is easy to understand because we're familiar with a square grid. Um, and we're going to do something based on this. Because if you look at it, um, you, can, you can tell that with a rectangle, this is going to sound obvious, but follow along. Um, you can tell with a square rectangle, the top line, the horizontal line, is the same as the uh, bottom line. And then similarly with the vertical line, the one on the left is the same as the one on the right. So we're going to do this, we're going to make this kind of tile where those two are copies of each other. So let me get rid of this tile repeat. And I'm going to keep my one inch rectangle as a guide. Um, and so what, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a line that is going to be the horizontal. And it's going to be on top. And I'm going to give it a different color. So this is not necessary, it's just to, uh, just to make it more clear. And then I'm going to draw another line that is going to be the vertical line. And I'm also going to change the color so we can see it better. So it's going to be blue. And I'm going to apply the same tile repeat. The tile repeat by default uh, has a space, uh, spacing of one uh, inch to the right and one inch uh, to the bottom. So we created again a similar uh, square tiling. But now what I can do, because the tile repeat creates uh, you know, instances of the same uh, object, is that I can go in and double click on my top line. And if I edit it, Let's say I add, I add an additional anchor. You'll see that that same anchor is repeated on all the ver all the copies of that one, all the clones, perhaps we could call them. And similarly, we can do the same to the horizontal version. So I'm going to double click into that one, and then I'm going to add another anchor. And as you can see, I can actually get it in or out of that uh, initial uh, square. And this is the this is the basis. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to hide the original rectangle so we can uh, contemplate our tile. So if we were to cut this tile a bunch of times, it would like neatly uh, stack together and cover the entire plane. Um, so here, this is what <laughs> this is what you need to do to start playing with tessellations. Um, you can keep on you can you can keep on editing all of these and you know find interesting shapes. So let's say you know you can. You can start by adding additional anchors, um, you know, finding what shape this is forming, perhaps making an animal. Animals are fun to make with this kind of technique. And then I can go back here and edit this one. And of course, you're not limited to use uh, square corner points. You can always double click onto one and make curvy ones. And you can have a lot of fun playing with these. I don't know, maybe this is kind of looking bear-like. If I do the curve like this. So, yeah, this is just to serve as a starting point for you to play with these. Um, I suppose if you wanted to use these to make uh, something like puzzle pieces, uh, it would need a, a little treatment. And perhaps let's go into it real quick. So I think once you have found a shape that you like, I think I went out a little curve here. So 
it started looking like a bird, so <laughs> I'm kind of committed to that. Um, but I'm good with these. Um, let's say we want to isolate that specific tile that we created. So what I can do here is I can say duplicate this component that where I kind of prototype my tile. I'm going to duplicate it here. And here I'm going to just get rid of all the things that I did. I'm going to get rid of the tile repeat. I'm going to bring back that rectangle. And to recreate the tile, uh, now that I sort of know the structure, I know that this blue path is the same that should go on the right. So I'm going to ungroup these so I can get access to those individual ones. So now I can simply duplicate this one. I can right click and find the duplicate option. And I can move that new one that's exactly as the left one to the right. And I'm still using my rectangle as a guide. And similarly with this one, I can duplicate it and move it. I didn't need to move that one. Move it to the bottom. And that is my basic tile. I'm going to hide that rectangle. It's not the prettiest, <laughs> but you get the idea. So now that I have that tile, I can actually use it. Uh, I'm going to create a new component, and I'm going to place it here. And because I know that the spacing I was using is one by one, I can use use a simple tile repeat, tile repeat and I can uh, now create as many as I want to. I think um, the whole reason I did this is that with my original version, I ended up with these additional kind of uh, floating lines on the edges. Uh, but in this case, I can actually you know have a complete uh, cut. And if you're going to cut these uh, as a you know a puzzle piece you can actually select everything and use another modifier to get rid of the um, overlaps. So there is this one called remove overlaps. Now, if I were to cut this on my laser cutter, each one of these would cut as a single piece. So super quick primer. Um, there are many, many other variations you can play with. And there are many other ways of optimizing the process of designing it. But I think this should get you uh, playing with it. Um, uh, a little bit for a more advanced subject, but I hope it was interesting or entertaining. Uh, thank you for watching and, you know, keep those questions coming.